Weapons for the Soldier brings together Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australian artists to examine complex themes of weaponry, warfare and protecting land and country. They're talking about the fact that all of these canvases that you see around here, they're not just a are just a slap on paint. They're real stories. They're stories of country. They're stories of each other. They're stories of family. They're stories of our sites that we have. But, thank you. The APY lands are the Ananu, Pijinjara, Yankanajara lands located in Central Australia. Weapons for the Soldier is the second major partnership between the artists and arts centres of the AP Wirelands and Hazelhurst Arts Centre. Weapons for Soldier is such a wonderful show. It's a coming together of APY artists and invited artists who are both Aboriginal and non-Indigenous as well. And it's a great showing of what we can do when we work together. There have been many frontier wars from a white man's army killing so many Aboriginal people. There have been the wars overseas. Violence and wars are not something we celebrate, but it is something we must be brave enough to think and talk about. For me, my weapon is a paintbrush. Art is powerful. Art connects people. Art can change lives and can even change the world. This groundbreaking project was initiated by the young men of the APY lands. These include Vincent Namachira, Aaron Ken, Derek Jungarai Thompson, Anwa Young and Cameron Young. With support from senior artists Willie Kaika Burton, Kulmanara Ken, Peter Munkery, Mumu Mike Williams and Frank Young. <laughs> So I saw this growing up from in my younger childhood, the, the wars that used to battle between Bidanjara and Yangkunjara and Yangkunjara and Bidanjara and Bidanjara and Yangkunjara and Yangkunjara. So it was all to each other and they used to use this weapon, this kulara, as their weapon and they would spear each other and, you know, and that was when they had a conflict. Now we have a different war. We have a war with alcohol, we have a war with marijuana and how it's really disturbing our young people. That's a picture showing young people not to go in. Instead, they should come back and learn how to make spears and be in a country, not in jail, with this. For our young ones to keep them on country and keep them strong with Jokurpa, we teach them all the time. And one of our greatest vehicles for that is through our art centres, because we get them involved in projects like this. Kulara Jota, all weapons for soldiers linking them up with their senior elders and senior artists and showing them how this country, our country, is on the canvas, it's in these weaponries, but also at the same time teaching them how to be strong. It's important for our young, young men. They can understand and take over our culture. Culture is important for them to learn 
So this is Malara and this is the story of my homeland and then this is all the water holes, the rock holes that is in my country. In Malara where my story is from, there was a wall. Men came with spears, thousands and thousands of spears and it was like bullets flying, it was you know, attacking and attacking. And what happened was that they hid in the water holes, they hid, they protected everyone, they just sort of went in from the ground. My name is Richard George. This is my home, my country. I have a true that one, Bill Rady, two, two brothers. This is Birari and it's about two brothers. The bottom one is the younger brother and the big one, the top one is the older brother. And, uh, so the brother was asking, the younger brother was asking, he was saying to his big brother, I want that woman, that one, that water snake, beautiful water snake. And the older brother said, no, she's already gone. What are you want after her for? She's gone now. No, no, I want her. I love her. I'm, I need to see her. And the older brother was like, no, too late. They're gone. <laughs> That's why, Peter Balani, that story, Chukwa yeah. was a really mind story for everybody in the land. It's an important story for us on the APY lands because it's about love and there's also war. Mm. You know, we've done the two together because it's, it goes hand in hand, love and war. They're strong emotions and strong things to have. Why me and Taylor have done these two paintings is also that it's so strong for our communities because we've got to keep the culture alive for the younger ones. <laughs> I think it's often lost on us white people when we go on about how beautiful our place is, how lucky we are that Australia is young and free. I mean, what an assault on common sense to say that Australia is young and free. We're ancient and the ancient part of that community is anything but free. My name is Ben Quilty and I made a work called Iri Naringi for this exhibition. On one visit out to Armata, I asked Sally Scales and Mr. Frank Young and a few of the people who were there if they could take me somewhere that there'd been frontier violence. I wanted my work for this exhibition to be about that frontier violence. And it made sense that Vincent had invited me and therefore I wanted to tell a story about the country that his family and extended community lives on. And actually Sally and her mum Josephine took me to this site um, drove through the desert for hours in the most extraordinary, beautiful landscape. The hostile to a whitey like me. These ladies just knew where they were going, knew every stone, knew the place. And it was a huge honour and privilege to be taken to this site where uh, a white man was killed by young Aboriginal men for, for his violence, for his, his racism, for his, his actively destroying their water sources, which a whole community had survived on for th tens of thousands of years. 
and they killed him. And the white people came back and, and killed a lot of elderly uh, Anganu men in this place here in Iringi. In my studio, we photo montaged a, a make-believe landscape. It's a, a totally made up landscape from different po parts of, a of photographs taken around the site because there wasn't one site. There's no, there's no plaque to remember the deaths of these elderly men. I, it's just by sitting in that place and that environment and feeling the weight of the history, the beauty of the landscape and the cultural significance of a site like that, that I then collaged these photographs and made the painting as a raw shark. I guess it's a, a play on activating the audience to see their place in that part of our, our shared history. It is an Indigenous story, but without my white forebears, it's a non-existent story. So my, I do tell a story that I am partly involved with. I didn't quite mean for it to be so massive, but when Vincent asked me, I thought I've really got to step up here. And I just think that it's a healthy thing to do, that by recognising that history, on a day like Remembrance Day, that you, we build a thick, heavy, solid layer of our history that is only good for our future. It's nothing negative about really acknowledging our history. I hope that you only need the tiniest piece of empathy to understand the sorrow and intergenerational trauma that ripples constantly through Indigenous communities from one side of this country to the other. Uh, and to be a part of it and to have an active voice and to be able to feel that I can do something and those people respect my efforts is, um, I, there's nothing else I need to do. My name is Vincent Damager and my work is Unknown Soldiers. This work came about by our experience to Canberra, to the War Memorial. Young men, Indigenous, they went overseas and they volunteered. When they came back, they weren't treated with any respect, no dignity, nothing. That's why I want to make it a tribute for them. Also, the ones that are buried with no names. One is on me, a self-portrait, trying to picture myself in their shoes. The material that I painted, the portraits on, it means that it's stuff that are hidden, hidden that what they went through and we don't know nothing about. Some of them forgotten, stuff like that. That's why I put the material of a actual soldier's uniform yeah, and put portraits on to bring forward what's been hidden. That experience after leaving that war memorial, we was all heartbroken. Them old men, they had tears in their eyes. So, yeah, and it's pretty frightening to see what things I was using. All the tools, all the weapons. It was really, really frightening. I just would like to add that uh, this was done by my father-in-law, who passed away. His name is Kumano Jimmy Pumpy. My children, his granddaughters, three of them, he taught them how to sing. And uh, he, he, he was a good guitar player. He was pretty special. My brother-in-law or colleague did the soldiers after the passing of the old fella. And uh, it was about like how the soldiers come rushing in, you know, to our country, stuff like that. That's what it symbolizes, horses and soldiers. Young people get involved with art and showing artifacts, how to make spears and stuff like that, and painting also, and then showing the next generation is keeping the land, country, culture strong.
my studio's across the road. There's a lot of shootings in this street. There's been uh, four mur murders, one on that corner, one on the next, where our car parked, one across the road, all within the last few weeks. These, these buildings are ancient. There's the, the boiler, so. <laughs> and this is the boiler, boil, boiler room of my art. Come on through. Here's the great muse of my Hi. life, Helen. Hi. And uh, so. Just living this uh, one of Albert. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, the language of, of this place really is spray paint, so. And um, the theme of our film is Guns Kill. This is, we, we've been with a lot of radicals. We're with Father uh, Blager when he and his group closed down the Dan Ryan Expressway protesting against guns. So there we go. There's Albert, my portrait of Albert. He's lost three sons. You know, he's had that phone call three times uh, telling that he's had a son shot. And um, it's my second portrait of Albert. And they're like the, 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 the paintings that are in this uh, exhibition. All the paintings in the, in the, in the exhibition are, uh, are done here like these. That's Albert again. And... Um, Can I take that one? That's all right. And this is my favourite. This is Smiley. He's the general. He's the, the gang leader. And the interesting thing is Smiley is an indigenous Indian. I first came to America in 1968 to be with Martin Luther King and he was killed. It's 50 years on now and things are worse here now than ever. It's like the end of civilization. I'm saying really, uh, Trump is twittering while America burns. So you've all been into my studio. <laughs> I'm glad we could take you to where the work in, in this wonderful exhibition, Weapons for the Soldier, where my, my little contribution has been made. Ned Kelly is one of those infamous characters as a bush ranger whose life was very in parallel to that of possibly an Aboriginal person at that time. Hi, my name is Tony Albert, and the work I have in Weapons for the Soldier is called Australia's Most Wanted, Armed with a Paintbrush, and it's a collaboration with Vincent Nemajira. That kind of figure is glorified within the Australian psyche. So I thought it was an opportunity to use such an iconic figure, but have it placed on the head of someone like Vincent Namajira, who is kind of the, the outlaw. He's asking difficult questions. He is interacting with the Australian art world in a very interesting way. The patches within the helmet come from a very large collection of what I call Aboriginalia, which is kind of kitsch Australiana with images of Aboriginal people on it. Um, they're quite fascinating because Aboriginal art, Aboriginal culture and Aboriginal life has been used within the tourist industry to sell Australia, but very much from a silent or a way which perpetuates the idea that Aboriginal people should be seen and not heard. I hope that the audience um, looks at this work and understands um, that as artists, as Aboriginal people, we just want our stories to be heard. We want our stories to be recognised. We want our stories to be valued. And the historical content attached to Aboriginal people in warfare pre-colonisation, in what we call frontier wars, and then in wars that Australia has fought in as a country, uh, there remains a kind of silent voice or a hidden history which is not written about, which is very, very important. For me, the work is about bringing those stories to the forefront and making sure they're not written out of history, but indeed written into history. Hello, my name is Greg Simu. 
The work that I presented in this exhibition is titled Three Brothers, Three Bodies, Three Landscapes. It's a photography-based uh, mixed technique uh, work, triptych. The Samoan culture of tattooing, in today's sense, it's, uh, it is a cultural icon, a, a living artifact uh, that has survived amongst our people for between three to 5,000 years. Its technique, methodology, and design has not changed and has never been lost. It's basically an unbroken geneal genealogy line um, to our ancestors, and it's, uh, it's an authentic um, living cultural tradition that has survived the last few hundred years of colonial process and colonizing. The work is deliberately ambiguous. Even though I, I try to portray or project a message or a story or a narrative, I found that the audience always creates their own narrative. So what I'm hoping that, that it will be a pleasant discovery that first they'll see a landscape and then, and then they'll stare at it and stare at it and stare at it and then all of a sudden they'll see a human body. And that will act as a metaphor, it's like the landscape is you. You're part of the landscape and the landscape is a part of you. I think we need to be less literal and, and more ambiguous to try and connect with our neighbours. My name's Danny Mellor. The works that I've made for Weapons for the Soldier are a trio of works. Um, the Mouth of the River, Natura Pacifica Balamalgol, and also a lakeside romance. So the works that I have here show a very particular kind of focus on death in a sense being a, a community event. It's a kind of a, a sense that, or a feeling in a way of, of birthing, of moving through into another world. In infrared photography, what we have is a particular light spectrum that's invisible to the human eye being made visible um, and sense to that kind of imagery where it suggests that the landscape is not as empty as we perhaps presume it to be. The imagery that's used in the pictures uh, is, is photographs that I've taken on, on field trips in the northern Queensland area of my grandmother's country. I trace, sometimes, sometimes trace the, the footsteps of photographers who were taking images in that area in the, in the sort of late colonial period and where photographers would begin to document and picture Aboriginal people in, in those ecologies and actually package those images as, as postcards. And I'm really quite interested in the way the reading of those images is recontextualised then as contemporary works whereby we kind of acknowledge that yes, this history has taken place, these people are very much part of the landscape and in fact it is their space, and how do we then read images and, and bring our own experience and interpretation to, that, to those range of really quite interesting and beautifully haunting pictures. My name is Cameron Young, and the artwork is Wati Warmala, Young Man Army. These young fellows are my cousins and uncles, young uncles. And we all from same community, Amara. My time in the army was very good. I was in a North Force that's a reserve in Darwin. You can see um, red band and painted up. It means um, Wari, Young Wari, and also Army. I left Army because I want to do maybe do something different, like fight in other fights, like for our land. Face paint and um, design represents um, fire trimming. And the uh, emu. And others are rainbow serpent. My heart is representing old, unknown soldiers that uh, died in World War II or I, and also uh, representing the um, um, what the warmer that they used to fight.
spear each other in the old times, yeah. Now they're fighting for legal rights. The young men will fight for land rights in the future. I feel proud, proud to um, show them my work. I wanted to show them, show the world what can Aboriginal people can do. Our culture is our knowledge, our stories in land, central desert. Our young men is fighting for um, keeping our Chukurpa culture alive. Um, I chose boxing as my weapon um, because boxing is a is a weapon in itself, but it's also about defending yourself. It's about self-belief. It's about having your own discipline. My name is Richard Lua, and the title of my drawing is "It's True Drawing Saved Me." Um, I'm a boxing trainer um, every night of the week, so boxing's a big part of my life, and I see the parallels between boxing and drawing, the discipline, the training, the skill required. You know, it's a therapeutic thing that, that you actually can do to heal yourself. Um, it is about keeping on going. It's about having uh, a period of time to, to focus on something, uh, and drawing and boxing do that. When I've made the drawings, they're of graphite onto paper, and so like I've actually wiped my hands or my gloves on the actual bag as I'm making the drawing, so there's the evidence or the residue of the actual drawing, and that's really important to me, the actual physical uh, process of making a drawing. I'm completely honoured to be here uh, for the show and working with the APY Lands artists and I think you know it's it's amazing to actually have the opportunity to work together and there should be many more shows like this. It's just really healthy and it's just you know my pleasure to be here. My name is Alex Eaton and this is my work. What are we fighting for exactly? Some of my um, earliest, I don't know if you'd call them artworks, but some of my earliest experiences of ever creating images was actually assisting my mum and dad who worked in the disarmament party uh, in the early 80s, anti-nuclear movement. I think that uh, sometimes there are um, ideas that need to be defended. Um, and occasionally we will need to go to war. However, we live in a, a, a day and age where the world is interlinked uh, in so many different ways now that we have an opportunity to broach peace. And I think our, as our default position, I believe that we should be conscientiously objecting. Can we find a resolution that isn't violent? It's very simple. We are living, however, in a day and age of incredibly partisan politics. Um, where there is a lot of division. So in fact, my main quote here, the, to dedicate yourself to a cause greater than yourself, is actually a paraphrasing of um, a very favorite quote of a very famous um, bipartisan Republican who died recently, uh, Senator John McCain. I hope the idea contained within what are we fighting for exactly, is the idea of what language do we use uh, around our political discourse and debate, and the idea that, carry over, that carries over into this, what do we really care about? What are the things you really care about? I may have a little history of things that I have objected to in here. However, sometimes the language needs to be more sophisticated. Sometimes it needs to be far more sophisticated than what we can simply put on a placard. My name's Lionel Bowden. And this is my artwork, Groundwork, which is uh, text work on a series of doormats. So for me, this really came from literally walking and walking and reflecting on the earth and, and my relationship to Bunjalung country, which is, I live up in Lismore now, which is Bunjalung country, Arakwal and Widjibul. The thing I love about spending time on land, whether it's in the ocean or in the forest or 
walking up a mountain is just that sense of really enjoying that fact that you feel small and that you can kind of disappear amongst the critters and the trees and the, the breeze and the bird song. But at the same time, the connection that you feel actually makes you feel much larger than, we, than when we isolate and feel alone in our little houses. So there's that sense of being grounded. And the work says, as you walk over me, think about who I am. That work was almost thinking about the earth, speaking those words to me. But over time, the I has collapsed so that the I is the earth and me, rather than being separate things. The work is kind of inspired formally by hopscotch. So having text moving vertically up to kind of invite people to walk across the work. Hopefully my work just provides a nice entry point um, to those of us that have grown up in suburbia. And so this work is about like remembering that the earth and is underneath the cement or it's underneath the carpet of our homes. And we're always in country, even if we've forgotten to ask the name of the mob. When I got this invitation, you know, there was a level of intimidation there because of the magnitude of, of the honour to be um, invited into such a group. I really want this work to be true to myself and to have honour and respect to the people of the APY. For me, it's the beginning of something. You know, next I want to travel out there and actually be in the land. I've painted Budadi, my homeland where it's about the water snake dreaming. And this morning is actually what they dance to, that's the story. Budadi, you know, that's a men's story, it's a strong space. It's a strong story, it's an important story, Bildadi. It's about two brothers, it's about them going to this country and then following and then looking for food and they've asked their sister. She goes, oh, it's here. It's nothing, it's a little bit. It's not a strong, it's not a big, it's not a big hunting. So the brothers in Bildali where the, the water is, the sinkhole, the creek, you know, they said, oh, the big one's gone in there, the big one's gone in there. They kept digging and they kept digging and it was just always a small game, it was always small. But like it, it, where the site is, it's a big story, it's a big important story. So when those, those two brothers were digging and digging, and they're finally getting to this spot and they get closer and they hear this snoring. <laughs> So what they thought was going to be fantastic, huge, you know, feast was just two men snoring. And so they gave, they both had the oneers, they both had the, dig, the big sticks, the, and they hit the two sleeping men simultaneously. And they woke up and they're like, hey, we've been hit. So the two brothers ran and they ran and got their sister and they put her in Bill Daddy and they ran and got the other one up the hill and they hid. So that these, because the two the two sleeping men were chasing them and they chased them and tried to find them but where Bildad is now is it's such a significant and beautiful spot and it's a story about the the rainbow serpent and snake and it's just there and it's about the two sisters and it's about the family connection. <laughs>
On the huge canvas, I was doing my story, the story of the trees, of the walk holes. So first, I always paint about my country and I always do a layer first of what's out there. So I'll draw about the emus, I'll draw about the trees, I'll draw about the water holes. And then after, I add in all those colours that you'll see on the canvas. Whenever we go out camping, there's this little bird and it never stops. And it just sits at the top of the, on all the spinifexes and just sort of makes that little sound. Do you know what bird it is, Roman? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it comes up in the night and it's it's a white little bit of a white little bird and it does that and it doesn't ever stop. <laughs> so what I've painted and what we've all done in all of our canvases, we've done our water holes, we've done our countries, we've done our jukurpas, the generations that come after us, they can see it and they can feel it and they can carry it on. They can look at it and go, this is what our old stories are, these are our history and they can have that for their future. What I like to do uh, with my work is to get two potentially contradictory signifiers and in this case we've got explosions, one of them is a volcanic explosion and the other one's a missile test and overlaid on top of that is quite an irreverent figure that's reacting to the explosion but also playing around with the idea that perhaps it's their mind exploding as they're taking on information. The titles of the works, uh, we can make it work and we can work it out are taken from um, pop songs, so a Bob Marley song and a Beatles song, and I deliberately chose quite optimistic songs that are looking to the future, but then, ironically, they're on top of these quite violent explosions. So, for me, it talks about dealing with the negative aspects of things, the horrifying and tragic aspects of war, but looking at it with a, a, a positive outlook that hopefully things will get better. I don't know how the audience is going to react to the work. I've painted others in this series and largely people have enjoyed them. Um, there's always funny poses that I see people put up on Instagram with big frowny faces next to the paintings. Um, but I hope that they're, they're, they're gentle enough that there's enough access points for people to be attracted to them while also talking about quite specific things and quite serious things. So perhaps luring people into conversations they might not necessarily think they'd be happy. This exhibition is an opportunity to honour the distinct position of Indigenous people within Australia who have long fought to maintain cultural strength and pride.
Banyala, you might have been a company, Togo, and I've done my I've done Pirati. Me, Makodara, and what it was a Togo, and it was taught to me by my father, and his father. And it's all about all of us keeping that strong, keeping our Jokura strong, looking at it and going, none of these stories that you see on these canvases. They're not false. They're not just a little bit of paint. It's actually our stories. It's a bit of us that we're putting down. And we're always doing that so that future generations can look at that, experience that, and know our stories.